uh, you know, my, uh, my uh, computer is in the freeze, freeze mode. Actually, I bought a new computer, uh, but I'm not using it because I don't have a screen for it. This one, this is a computer with a screen, you know, I need to buy a screen for it. Uh, <clears throat> we have to wait for His Majesty to you see. You As you can, can tell see the, the title of this video, I'm going to ask a question, not a confusing question, a simple question. And no Muslim on the planet, not the least, not the greatest, will be able to answer it. In fact, I'm so confident that no Muslim will be able to answer my easy, straightforward question that I hereby vow that I will record myself bowing down and reciting the Shahada if a single Muslim can answer it. Once our Muslim friends realize why they can't answer my simple question, they're on their way out of Islam. It is starting to get boring. It's like whoever wants to get famous or make a name for themselves. The first thing they do is go ahead and make a video on YouTube about the evil side of Islam or the evil prophet of war. And I understand that you're a minority and there are not that many people like you, that you are ignorant and it's close-minded as you are and I could let the dislikes do the talking for me. But just in case anyone takes you a bit too seriously, I think I should educate you. Jesus versus Muhammad peace be upon them both. Because both of them are prophets of Islam, and for that reason, I respect both. Because they were the best of men to walk this earth. Regarding y'all's first allegation of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him marrying a minor, all I can say is that Islam is the only religion to prohibit the marriage of minors. Who has not reached puberty? In different places, the age for marriage varies, even in USA states, you have 13 and 15. What age do you recommend? It varies. And since this is Jesus versus Muhammad, let's compare it to the context of Jesus with none other than the best of women to have walked this earth, Mary. The mother of Jesus got married to Joseph, who was 19 years old when she was only 12 years old, you have to understand there is absolutely nothing wrong with this because at different contexts in different times in other places people mature, develop differently you cannot simply compare the time and place of Muhammad peace be upon him to the time and place we're living today. We have iPhones and air conditioners, and electric heaters while in the time Muhammad peace be upon him. They were living in the middle of the desert you cannot simply compare the two and another really important thing to note is that Muhammad peace be upon him has been criticized ever since the time Topper would for an entire 300 years but it wasn't until 1905 that the issue of his marriage with Aisha actually became an issue why is this because it was an absolute norm, they had developed faster matured faster. And weren't like the woman of today the next issue of multiple wives you all brought up firstly read your bible Abraham how many wives did he have to Sarah and Hoja. Prophet Solomon 700 wives and 300 concubines. The issue of multiple wives is the famous criticism, but if you were to put the pieces to the puzzle they don't really match if Muhammad pieces upon him wanted all these wives to fulfill his own desires it doesn't really make sense. When the tribe of his time offered him the best of women. The most beautiful and fancy of women. But he rejected them. It really doesn't make any sense. It's also important to note. That out of all of his wives all of them were ex-divorcees or windows except for one this is not a man who was chasing after his desires. As you make him out to look? Like it's a man who cares about women. That would be left with no other man to take care of them, sounds familiar. It's a man who cares about the importance of community. The importance of looking after one another. And also a very important thing to note is that Islam actually prohibits marriage to more than one wife if you are incapable of catering physically financially and mentally, to more than one wife you are prohibited, and even still if you are capable, you have the financial means. And you are physically capable of catering to more than one woman, you are prohibited if you do not know how to deal justly with them. And since you all brought up the issue of adultery. I'm just going to let you know that 36% of couples in the USA fall into infidelity, and I go you are not, I think you should have a problem with the actual issue of adultery in itself. I mean, Tiger Woods' wife, ran after with some golf clubs. Directly an actual punishment for adultery in Islam has rarely ever been implemented. Due to the sheer amount of evidence needed to prove the case of adultery in so many instances, a man would come to Prophet Muhammad and would say I have committed adultery. Muhammad? said get away from me you're a madman, something is wrong with you. The same man came back, and he said I had committed adultery. I want to get the punishment so I can purify myself, he said, the whole purpose of the punishment of adultery isn't to punish people, it is to deter them away from the issue of adultery. So if they knew such a punishment existed, they would run away from it. Another thing, y'all mentioned jihad. 
look up Psalm 137, and you'll see that your texts have passages that can make you all feel uncomfortable. Islam teaches jihad to it and we don't shy away from it. Contrary to what y'all said. War waging Muhammad. Having never been tortured or persecuted we have persecuted the companions of Muhammad, we were tortured severely. Somalia a female companion, of Muhammad peace be upon him had a spear driven through her private part. Simply because she believed in Allah. Believed in the one God. Bilal the first black man to accept the message of Islam. He was an Ethiopian slave he accept the message of Islam. And he was given right at a time where there were no rights for his people. He was tortured for this even in USA these people weren't even given rights unto 100 years ago black people weren't even considered human beings. After many years of forbearance. After many years of persecution. After many years of torture. Finally Allah had given permission to Muhammad to fight. Sure, we can give him the other cheek. But that would only result in a whole lot of dead Muslims. So we Islam gave them the rights to stand up for yourself. As it says in the Quran fight for the sake of the oppressed from the men women and children and Islam even made responsibility on everyone participating in war. You do not hurt the trees, you do not hurt the elderly, the woman, the children. Wear your ethics of war. Like we have ethics of war. Obama said this. I have two words for you predator drones, the children Olivia cannot even turn the other cheek because their cheeks blown off from your drones. And lastly you wanted to talk about his death. Yes his final words were do not turn my grave into a place of worship. Because he didn't want people to start worshipping him, because the message of Islam was never to turn Muhammad into a god or praise him excessively. When Muhammad peace be upon him died the companions couldn't walk they couldn't speak they couldn't talk with one another that was so shattered some of them had to deny that he was even dead, because they couldn't believe that it was too much for them to grasp and you want to come out make a mockery out of his death, shame on you in our religion is prohibited 100% prohibited to make a mockery out of anyone else's belief and you want to make a mockery out of else shows what values you have. And everyone else they had to watch this video I'm sorry we have to go through this but we really have to show the world who Muhammad peace be upon him really was he was nothing like what they say rather he was the best of men to walk this earth, and if you read his book for yourself read his life read his zero you would see for yourself, what kind of men I'm at peace be upon him, was thank you.